Hello there! In this video, we are going to look at an experiment to determine the acceleration of free fall using a falling body. Okay? And this question is asking us, in this experiment, what would lead or what kind of a systematic or random error could lead to a value that is too large? So that means my A is too large. All right. So if you have trouble visualizing the free fall experiment, I have found some pictures from the internet and a free fall experiment generally would look something like this. Okay. So what we have here, let me show you. On the top part, we have this thing called an electromagnetic release. Okay. So uh, we call this an electromagnetic release because there's a magnet here. Magnetic release. Okay, this magnet is attached to the metal ball. And if I press this button to trigger some to trigger it, the ball will fall down and land on the trap door. Okay, and this is the trap door. When the ball falls on the trap door, the trap door will send a signal into the timer. When the ball leaves the trigger, the electromagnetic release, it will also send a signal to the timer. So the timer will actually measure the time taken starting when the ball leaves so ball leaves or ball is being dropped and then we will end here when the ball reaches here okay so let's see i obviously can measure the height difference between the platform and the electromagnetic release so i'm just going to call this h okay i can use the timer to measure time he time it takes for it to drop through the distance h and if i release the ball because this is an electromagnetic release it looks like this you see the metal ball here ah uh, you see this metal ball here so if i release the ball my u is actually zero so you imagine you press the switch the magnet turns off the ball will fall timer will start ball will fall a distance h ploop to the bottom then ball will stop and then we measure the time Okay, I guess we can stuva. S T U V A. We don't have any information about V, but U is zero and time is T, which we can measure. S is the height H, okay? And A is your negative G. Of course, if you want to, this H is negative H la, because we measure from the top to the bottom. Displacement is in the negative direction. So I use the equation with no V. No, the equation with no v is s is ut plus half at square. So right now, if I release in the free fall experiment, I will get s is equal to half at square. Or in other words, now it's half gt square because u is zero, ma. Okay, and this displacement is actually your h. So from this equation, when I sub the Stuva value in, I will get this one. Okay, s is h. T is maintained as T, U is 0, so this one becomes 0, and then A is negative G. Negative, negative, both sides will cancel out. Pretty good. Okay, so now I can actually see if, let's say, I want to find G. Let me move this here. Let's say we want to find G. Hmm, how shall we manipulate the equation? Because we are looking for acceleration of free fall. So in this case, I will rearrange this, and I will get G is equal to 2H. We bring up here, you get 2H over t square. Okay, so now, if the measure distance h is longer than the true distance, so for example, for option c, h is too large. So if h is large, what happens to your g? Your g is too large. Leading to g, too large. Okay, so c is a viable option. I'll put a check mark here. What about D? T is too long. Okay, longer than the true time. Measured time T from the timer. Okay, maybe that's a calibration error. So this T square become big. What happens when the numerator, so the denominator is a bigger number? Then the value of G will be smaller. So G is too small. So this one is out. Okay, what about A and B? So A and B has something to do with air resistance, okay? Because the dimension of the body will not affect how quickly it falls unless there's air resistance. 
So it free fall is independent to the dimension of the body unless there is air resistance. Then certain types of shape, certain types of diameter will have more air resistance. Okay, but uh, and even if so, when the dimension is large, air resistance increase. Okay, so let's think about option A and B. Option A is air resistant presence. Air resistant is present. Option B is air resistant is present and large. So in both cases, let's consider your ball is falling down. Falling down now this way up. And the direction of velocity is here. Where is air resistance? Air resistance will oppose motion. But this is the direction of air resistance. I'm just going to call this F, R, air resistance. Okay. Another force acting on the ball is my good old MG. So air, res air resistance will actually slow down the rate of change of acceleration. Meaning the ball will fall, but it won't fall as fast as it was if there's no air resistance. Because air resistance takes away some of the kinetic energy. So when it comes to air resistance, there are two ways to look at it. You can look at the kinematics perspective. So you could say net force is Ma. But now my net force will be Mg minus air resistance is Ma. Without air resistance, G is equal to A. Okay. So from here, you will have Mg minus air resistance is equal to m. If you cannot put numbers inside, okay, put numbers to help your brain. Maybe this is 10 newton, maybe this is 4 newton. Okay, so if there is air resistance, okay, if there's air resistance, then what will happen here is this will be 10 minus 4. And to make my life easy, I put this one as 1 kg, okay? I don't use 9.81, I use 10. Let g be equal to 10. Newton per kg. Okay, so this one is 10 Newton. So this one will divide by 1. So now your A is 6 meter per second squared. Without air resistance, what is your net force? Mg. Net force is Ma and the only force is Mg. So M and M will cancel off. G will be equal to A and G is equal to 10. Okay, so with air resistance, your acceleration is always less because air resistance will oppose a falling free fall motion. Okay, so both of these will cause smaller A. So this means this option is wrong. This option is wrong because these two will cause a smaller A. Your answer is C. Okay, so understand the effect of air resistance it will decrease the acceleration when the ball is falling down ball fall down air resistance is trying to oppose the motion so the ball's velocity will not increase as fast if you want a graph to help you brain this maybe this is vt graph this one is when there is no air resistance fr is zero this one is when there is air resistance fr not zero Okay, so that way, if you look at the gradient, the gradient is decreasing. So A is too small. A is smaller than G because you want to find G. Okay, and for C and D, whenever it's about measurement, try to find an equation that can help you relate. So maybe you can sketch a drawing and see that when we drop this thing down here, we can measure H, we can measure T. H and T, ma. so try to bring it into an equation. And then from the equation, you can decide. All right, that's it for the question. I'll see you in the next one. Happy physicing. Physicing. Bye-bye.